Hey everybody, today we have an Optima to look at. I think it's an HD 72. I haven't actually opened it up all the way yet. I just cut the tape, made sure the box was open, and made sure there was no loose pieces. So you're going to be seeing this when I see this. It came in with a no power complaint after they tried two different lamp assemblies. It takes uh, this lamp assembly, if I remember correctly, we'll confirm that in a little bit. This is just one I have that I think I can use for testing. So let's get the... Uh, let's get through this here. There it is. Hiding down in there. What do we got here? Ah, yes. And there's the old or another lamp assembly that... Uh, they decided to kind of look at it themselves and thought that they might want to change some wires or something. I, I don't really know the full story, but I know that they were taking stuff apart. Oh yeah, this is the original. You can see all the uh, dust built up back there. If you have uh, an HD70, sorry, I thought it was an HD72. It's an HD70. If you have an HD70, you want to make sure okay, that uh, you don't have dust building up on the lamp like that back there. That's not a good sign. So I have a theory that either it overheated and it popped the thermal fuse, or it overheated and damaged the power supply, or when they were moving wires, maybe one of the wires hit something. I, uh, again, I'm not... 100% sure yet. I want to look at these other lamp assemblies because they did say they were taking and moving wires around. And this, this is a little concerning actually. See that right there? Hmm. Is that a burn mark? something to point at it. You can probably see what I mean, but for those that don't know what I'm talking about right here, that little black mark right there. Is that an arc mark maybe? Hmm. It looks like this wire. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Let's look at the lamp assembly first. Let me grab some tools. Yeah, we're going to look at this first. This is um, this is an aftermarket housing with a Phoenix original bulb inside. That's a DC lamp. So you can't use an Osram or a Philips in here. It has to be a Phoenix. Is that SHP? It's a DC lamp. One of the ways you can tell if a lamp is DC is if one of the wires is permanently attached. That usually means it's a DC lamp. So what I wanted to look for is to see if there was any evidence of an electrical short. And I think I see one. Let's see if... Let's get it in frame here. You see right here that little... That little brown mark right there in front of the screwdriver? That looks like an arc. Then if we look at the bottom, is that a burn? That's not good. I mean, that could definitely arc to that metal. I wonder if this was the other way. They were taking these apart and moving stuff. I, I hope that they didn't do that. See, I wonder if it was this way and they started moving things around and hit that metal. If, uh, if you buy a lamp assembly, or buy a lamp or a full assembly, and it doesn't work, don't just go moving things around without double checking. That's a little troublesome. Now, a lot of times the original puts the wire up on top, 
doesn't really matter as long as it's not in the way because here's one that is good and you can see that wires down there all right so let's let's do this I'm going to leave this apart but I am going to let's just put the screws here so I don't lose them or mix them up with projector screws because next I want to get into the projector and see how salvageable the uh, projector itself is. One moment. You know, the uh, lens cap is gone. That's fine. It's kind of a useless lens cap on these. It's like this rubber round thing that doesn't really stick. Uh, while this is an older projector, it's still a, uh, it's a nice unit. So I'm hoping we can fix it. And take this apart. I'm going to start with removing these four screws on the back. And it's pretty common to have one of these corners cracked. As the plastic ages and dries out, it'll shrink a little and crack. And then those have to come off got a little rust on it too so this projector has been well used I actually have one of these if uh, anybody wants to buy one let me know totally forgot I had it uh, let's see what else okay that goes to the bottom yeah there we go and it's actually clipped right up in here so I'm gonna loosen we'll get the top released so that we can get in uh, get that back off too so let's take the lamp door off take the lamp door off and it's kind of give a gander and there definitely dusty very 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 dusty uh, interestingly I don't see a color wheel unless there's a clear segment showing we should see, I feel like I should see something in here. But that's okay. We'll figure it out. So now, we're going to take out these three screws. And that should release the front. Keep in mind that there are two of the screws are recessed like that. They have that, uh, you know, angled thing, and then the other one's just a uh, normal Phillips head screw, doesn't have the recessed, and that goes here. Alright, getting there. I hear all kinds of stuff rattling about in here. This is going to be uh, a curious one, I think. Then we'll take out one. Two, three screws, and I think it's been a while since I've worked on one of these, but I think that will, I think that'll do it. I think that, yep, that'll get us free. Ah, <laughs> there you go. Look at that. So their their first uh, lamp assembly, this one, it's probably fine. Uh, in fact, this projector. So I'm pretty sure we have a failed color wheel here as the main problem. And we may have a secondary problem of a power supply issue. So we're going to unplug that front. It's got spider webs in it. It's got a bug. And we can see it's just, you know, it's a well used projector. So now. Let's see, the top, the top should come straight up, and then we're going to unplug the keyboard. It's actually not too terrible. Oh, found more of the color wheel. See that? There's some there too. Set that over. Oh, what else fell out? Oh, no, I found the white segment. Okay. Yeah, there's the clear white. There's the clear segment. Not 
white, it's clear. I guess it lets white light through, so whatever. Now let's take that back off now that I got the top cover off and we can see the dust carnage. It's actually not awful, it's just a projector that's probably been mounted in the same place for, you know, 10, 12 years. There's more of the color wheel falls out. There's the blue segment, or red segment, rather. Let's see if we can, yeah, cool. So let's see. What's next? Give it a little shake, maybe. Get all the rest of those shards out. I kind of want to just plug it in and see, but let's uh, let's get into here. Let's see, is that? I think that's the screw. I want to get inside that area here where the wheel is. Or is that just stuck? And we have down here. Yep. Come on. There we are. Shield out. And now we should be able to safely peel that back. The glue has long since dried out. So let's just slide that whole thing out. We'll double side tape that back in if we end up replacing it. So, yeah, this color wheel is no more. It is an X color wheel. Let's take that out. Where did I put my snips? Oop, need to kick that. So let's, let's cut that zip tie. Kick that out. Because we want to unplug just the color wheel and then the uh, photo cell sensor. So I'm curious if this really has no power or if they're uh, description of no power means it won't turn on because they were asked if it had any power and they said no it doesn't come on so I guess we'll find out if that means no standby or nothing or if it's just because the uh, the color wheels had better days look at that I just pulled that right out again what happens is all of the dust buildup inside causes the color wheel to run hot and then the the segments are glued in there in between in this gap and what will happen is the heating and cooling makes that metal expand and contract and then eventually the uh, glue breaks and once the glue breaks, the segments fall out from the uh, centrifugal force of spinning it, you know, a couple hundred thousand, well, hundred, not hundred thousand, a couple hundred or a couple thousand RPM, I'm not really sure. I should figure that out. Let's see if we can pop that off, though. I want to show you guys, yeah. So now you can see, that's where the segments are glued. And then that's push pressed on over the top to kind of help lock them in place so the motor itself is probably fine it feels fine but the uh, rest of it is obviously shot all right so the power supply is down the bottom here and there uh, we could just plug it in and see what happens but uh, before I do that we need to put the uh, lamp door back on lamp door has a interlock switch right here that this little tab um, interacts with I guess you could say or uh, I don't know yeah interacts
hopefully you can hear that little click that's the uh, door switch being pressed and that that allows the power supply to turn on some projectors will come on and just warn you that the door is open other projectors will just act like they're unplugged I'm not going to bother with plugging in the infrared for the front panel we'll just leave that alone we do need to plug this in though so that we can see if there's any uh, response so we're just going to just set that on top so let's plug it in and see if we get any light or if we get some smoke or what maybe a big pop that would be a little a little uncomfortable for me, but you know, such is life. I plug it in, and we get nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. All right. So that means we probably have uh, at least a blown fuse. I suspect that burn mark that I saw on that second lamp assembly that we looked at that had the wire twisted all weird, you know, this one. I suspect that shorted out the uh, power factor power, that 150 to 380 volts, shorted that right to ground. So, let's pull the power supply out. Take out these screws first. We already have the color wheel out. Anybody who's keeping score currently, we need at least one color wheel, a cleaning, and possibly a power supply repair or a replacement. Let's see, that's all the screws. So now this board should lift up. It's plugged in to the uh, DMD board right here. And we're just gonna fold it over. I'm not gonna unplug anything because we don't need to. Here's the ballast framed a little better. So there's your ballast and that's the power supply. Here's our PFC power into the ballast and then these two wires over here go through this cable over to the uh, lamp section and that plugs into the lamp. And this is a DC ballast. And so it has a positive negative output. So it's those two and then have the standoffs. Those need to come out. So what we'll do and plug the control wire. What we're going to do is get the power supply out, check the fuse. The fuse is probably bad. Replace the fuse. Or actually before I replace the fuse, we're going to check a few semiconductors and see if they're shorted. And uh, we'll do the same here. I want to make sure that the MOSFETs that are bolted to this heat sink, and uh, I think this one too, I think that's the one that turns on the power. I want to see if any of those are shorted. Yeah, MIP, I'm pretty sure that's a, uh, the control for turning power on to the uh, projector. So we'll just set that here. And then let's get our ground screw. Four, three, three screws, four screws. All right, that one, the plate off. Oof, man, this thing does not want to come up. Oh, there's uh, heat sink pads under this. Let me go hit this with air, actually. I'll be right back. Okay, that's better. I didn't clean the whole thing. I just got out the dust here because I don't want it to get stuck underneath that, uh, that pad. All right, and then, oh, there are two screws down there and down there that hold a metal bracket on that go over the uh, power input. So those have to come out.
slide that bracket off. There's the bracket. That holds the power plug in place so that you don't bend it loose with the, the wire. All right, we'll unplug the door switch. Unplug low voltage out. There's our power supply. Doesn't look terrible. Still some dust. Oh, they don't use the heat sink pad on this one. All right, well, I guess it didn't really matter then. Sometimes they have one of those gray pads, you know, for helping thermal transfer. All right, first thing we want to check, actually I'm going to unplug that PFC wire. Move that on the ballast. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the fuse. Fuse in this case is a little 5 amp round guy right there. So our power comes in here. Zero ohms is what we should have when we check it. So it looks like here to here. That's open. So that fuse is open. Definitely makes sense that that's blown up. Then we want to check the bridge rectifier, these four pins. Then as we go over, there's a bunch of stuff bolted to the heat sink. It looks like that transistor, or that FET, and then, yep, and then that's also a FET. So we want to check those. Uh, the one that drives the PFC, this pin right here, if we kind of follow that, it's probably going to go back to the big one. So first thing, or the second thing, also there should be a big resistor. I don't know if you, you see guys... that down there, that gray resistor down there. And check that, see if that's open. It should be these two pins. No, that's good. That's actually a good sign. May have just lost the fuse. I'm really hoping. And all I'm checking for is short circuits. I'm not really paying attention too much. To the value it doesn't really matter as long as it's not you know like that so if we go from here to here here we'll go to diode test for the uh, bridge so about a half volt drop that's good and then go to that transistor again I think that's the gate That's the blocking diode. And we'll go to this little guy here. Hmm. Now if that's a diode, and they have a common anode or common cathode, that would make sense, but... Oh. Maybe I didn't have the probes on right. Let's see, go from here. 614. All right, so you have to be really careful on there. That's a very tight connection. So let's try that again. Let's go on the front side. I think I was touching. 0.613. Nothing. Good. Let's go the other way. Seems like that's fine. Yep. That's good. Uh, let's check this diode. Yep. Okay. So that's, that's positive. Um, I feel good about that. We might be fine with just changing the fuse. Let me see if I have any 5 amp fuses around. All right, we're going to desolder. Going to desolder that fuse. And we're going to do that by soldering first. This is probably silver solder or silver based solder. Either way, it's older and you want to kind of wet it. Add a little bit of fresh solder to help, and then we'll roll in with the pump. Now 
Oops. I accidentally turned my iron off. Let's let that warm back up. See, all right, there's the old fuse. I got that out, and I got the new fuse. These holes look okay. Let's just put it in a place where you guys can see. There we go. So I'll just give these little legs a just a little bend out so that they stay. Now let's solder it. should be able to try this. Fuse has changed. Those FETs seem to be fine. I don't see anything shorted that makes me too concerned. Let's, uh, I can see anything shorted, so I'm not concerned. So it's not even like I'm thinking it might be shorted. There's nothing I could see that looks shorted. So I'm really hoping we just lost the, uh, the uh, fuse with all of that. Let's just get that, that. Actually, let's make sure that is out of the way. Okay. Then we want to check the ballast. So again, let's get the meter. We'll leave it on ohms. I uh, can't really get to the bottom that plate. So let's let's get them. No, of course I let go and then they'll drop back down. finger under it, that'll help. And then we have one more. And I actually have a full other ballast I can use. Another whole ballast, it's the uh, same thing. The bracket is a little different, so I would have to swap brackets, but they're close. The ballast would work, but we'll hopefully not have to do that. Hoping this one's okay. Put that off of there. All right, so the components I am concerned about, pardon me, are under this heat sink. Let's pop that heat sink off. be able to see better what we're dealing with. So we have this one I want to check, and then those two. Oh, and probably this one too. We'll just check them all, you know, can't hurt. So we'll see, we'll start on, let's see, let's start with that diode. This guy right here, this is the output diode. We should get, yeah. That looks good. And then, let's see, so then, I guess we got another 
diode here? Is that what that is? Two diodes? Yep. And then, where's our three-legged fella? One, two, three. All right. So then, there's the FET. Not shorted. Not shorted. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, this one? Not shorted. Good. Now down here, that's an SCR. Oh, we got that one. Let's check that one too. I don't know if that's a FET or if that's a... That's shorted, whatever it is. Unless I'm not looking at it right. Yep, not looking at it right. It's that pin, that pin, that pin. So there we go. There to there, nothing. There to there, nothing. And nothing. So, the SCR, we're going to have about, yep, about 30 ohms across there. high and the K ohms there, hundred K, hundreds of K ohms. So this seems okay too. At least it's not uh, not shorted. So I'll just brush the, uh, the dust off of the bracket. Again, I don't want to go too nuts, especially until they uh, until I get a price together for them. I have to change the fuse because without changing the fuse, I can't tell if the uh, there's any kind of power. So had to do that. So I'm going to put this back on. Oof! There's supposed to be heatsink compound here. See that? That's all dried out. Nasty. Let me uh, let me clean that up. So some rubbing alcohol, clean that off. Clean that off. And then we'll put a little bit, just a wee bit of uh, just some, some like gray stuff. It's more than enough. We just need to draw the heat away from those diodes. And this one. Come on, get going there straight. What the heck? Oh, there we go. Just didn't want to line up. Look at that, even the little marks lined back up. Not bad. And we have our control. This is the control wire for the ballast. Plugs in. Oh. And dust off it. Need to plug this back in. That'll give us our 480 or a 380 for the uh, ballast. Let's see which way did that wire go? This way. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right. So that's down. We'll set that there. Let's get the get the cover. I want to put this and that other piece on just to uh, help protect. I'm only going to put two screws in. Power supply because we're just trying to see 
what works and what... Oh, I got it back. Wait, do I have it backwards? No, I just didn't have it straight. There we are. And I am going to put the ground wire on because I want the ground connected so that the uh, GFI that I'm plugged into works, you know, is going to work properly in case I bump something with bare skin and I don't want to zap myself. Alright, so ground is on. That is secured enough. And then we will put a screw here. We'll put a screw here just to hold the ballast in place. And we'll put two. Put one here. Then we will put... And I'm not going to bother with the uh, standoffs over here. We're just going to plug this back in. Like that. We'll look under here and everything looks, oh, we'll look under here and everything looks copacetic. Let's get the meter out of the way, adjust my tools a little, throw the old fuse in there. Now for the color wheel, it has to be hooked up where the projector won't try and start. So even though there's no glass on this, it'll still spin. In fact, I've uh, done this intentionally uh, to a projector I used to make uh, an SLA 3D printer with because I just needed black and white. So I had one with a bunch of busted segments and you know did it the rest of the way. So we'll just hang that off to the side. It's out of the way. We are not going to put a lamp in at the moment. We're just going to do it like this. Get our keyboard, plug that in. We're just gonna just kind of set it on top there. And let me get my little light bulb thingy. All right, so I have this thing set up again. Uh, this time I actually have a 250 watt bulb in it instead of a uh, 60. See, that's a uh, 60 watt. This one's a 250, which means it'll sync up to about 250 watts of power. So if there's a short in here, this should light up very bright. If there's not a short, it should just kind of blip a little and stay very dim, if on at all. But all we're hoping to see are lights here. So let's get to the uh, power strip. Let's turn that on and let's see what happens. Hey, look at that little standby light that's a really good sign so it looks like it might just be a fuse and the color wheel so next thing we will do is hmm do I want let's see do I want to you know what let's fire it up without a lamp Let's fire it up without a lamp installed and see if uh, see what happens. See if it blows the fuse when it tries to kick the power factor correction in. Now, nah. color wheel spun up. This thing's happy as anything. I don't know if you guys can see that wobbling. <laughs> Watch the color wheel. Here, I'll start it over. Just watch this whole thing. Ready? <laughs> so, it's trying to strike the lamp. There's no lamp to strike. And then it's going to stop. Alright, so that's a good sign. Alright, so uh, it's a good thing I'm a little bit of a pack rat and try to think ahead a little. Um, I have a used but good color wheel. This is actually out of an HD72, but it's the same. 
and then I actually have a uh, brand new HD 70 so I have a new color wheel and a working color wheel we will use the working color wheel for testing and then if the customer okays everything we'll put the uh, good color wheel in but first I'm gonna go give this thing a vacuum slash compressor treatment okay that's way better all the uh, cobwebs well all but most of the cobwebs have been taken out there's still some crust down in there but what we'll do what we will do is make sure the color wheel works okay and then once I see it working with the lamp installed we'll clean it deeply once I take that main board back out to put the rest of the uh, uh, screws and brackets back in for the power supply and ballast but first things first let's set this guy in here I'm lucky in that I can even use the bracket from the 72 so we'll put that screw in snug her down plug that in that infrared wire actually I'm going to unplug this plug it back in to the front and let's see let's now in place. Just kind of fold that wire out of the way and let me let's see. This lamp looks okay. I like this one. It's old. It's, uh, it's from 2015 but it's a good test lamp. I've used it a few times. So let's open the lamp door. plug in the lamp assembly there we are Put our lamp door back on Snug those guys down. All right. Oh, more glass. Uh, I keep thinking about taking the keyboard out, but then I got to tear that. Eh, we'll just do it this way. Where's that shield? I want to set this on. I kind of want to set it in place so that if anything pops, the uh, lamp shorts out and pops, that it's protected. The rest of the projector is protected. What the heck am I missing here? The wrong screw? A couple of screws it could be. Probably just didn't have it straight, right? Yep, didn't have it straight. Alright, so I don't have the back hooked in. I just, again, just have it sitting there. There we are. Let's set that. That all feels good. My screwdriver out of the way, and let's hit the uh, main power. That's good. All right, here we go. I heard the color wheel searching. Let's see if we have light yet. Don't see light. 
Oh, here we go. Yeah, a little bit. It's coming up. Focus it. There we are. Optoma. Love it. Careful. And let's see. How many hours? Menu. Here we are. Menu. Options. Lamp settings. Thousand and one hours. Yeah, you know, that kind of makes sense with the old uh, lamp that we saw. So, cool. Picture looks good. Um, let's see, do we have a test pattern on this model? I kind of don't think so. Let's see, menu. Do I have a... No test pattern, maybe here? No test pattern. That's okay. Let's turn it off. Let it count down. So now it's going to let it cool down. Uh, I'm going to get my quote together for the customer and see what they say. And then hopefully I will be back in a few minutes with me doing all the rest of the work by putting the uh, new color wheel in and finishing the cleaning and reassembly and all that fun stuff. So stand by. And I'm back. We got the okay. Uh, the price was very reasonable. I uh, don't like to talk numbers on the videos, but it was well under the price of a replacement projector, even for as old as this one is. Uh, very fair price. And they're very happy to go ahead with the repair. So now we are going to finish what I started. by reinstalling all the rest of the uh, fasteners. I also want to give it a little more of a brushing and vacuuming. I just want to get all the rest of that. I need that dust out. We just don't want that. It's just bad. Bad dust. Naughty. So we're going to clean gonna just one little spot I can get right here there we go we got that one Let's see we got the fan blades are clean they're good um, this side looks good now all right so let's take out my test color wheel I actually offered them a price on keeping the test color wheel, um, but with the caveat that I can't really warranty it, you know, depending on how much money they were looking to save, but uh, the price was reasonable enough that with the new color wheel, they opted to go with that. So let me go vacuum out this side, and I'll be right back. There we go. Happy with that. Now... We need to visit the new color wheel. So that's the screw for holding the wheel in. There's the old wheel. Let's get a uh, flathead and let's back all these out. Spare motor for whatever. Let's get the new wheel. You know what? I'm going to use that box to put the uh, put the other wheel in. Oh, this one comes with a bracket. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that was an option. That actually makes this even easier. Let's just switch the index sensor make sure it's clean the 
looks good. Oops. Sits there. That must be why the part number isn't the same as what's on the uh, label. Because it comes with that bracket maybe, I don't know. It's definitely a new bracket though because there's no uh, mark on it from the screw being tightened. See when, uh, most of you probably know this, but you can see if something's been installed before because there'll be some sort of witness mark on the metal, you know, from the old screw being on it, which was the case here. But we'll take the, uh, the test color wheel that I just used. Sensor and everything. And I'll just wrap it on up and then put it in here. Now the one thing I definitely have to do, I need to make sure that I write used, and then HD72, or HD70. So I just wanted to write on there so that I know that it's not a brand new one. Let's see, we'll plug this in after we get that back all put back together. So let's go over here, get our ballast, let's fold that main board back out of the way, and let's finish putting these screws in, and that little metal fella that holds the uh, plug in place. Then this has to go in. That goes right down here. Guess it helps if I face it the right way, huh? Which would be this way. <laughs> it looks like, yeah. Yeah. really hard to do with the camera. One moment. I just learned something. That bracket cannot go on with these screws in. You have to put the bracket on as the power supply is installed. So let's take out these screws. Try not to block your view if I can help it. It goes this way you block the plug so it has to be this way so we'll just like that now it can go down and that ground wire this has to move that I believe was pointing the other way. I think that was over here. But we'll do that after we get all this stuff down. Alright, so now I'll put one in here to get that started. And there's like dust stuck to the screws.
go. Put that straight. Now. So that must go this way to push down on there. Insulation down, cover, shielding down. get it all straight. Oh, no, I have it backwards. Oh, wow. Okay, that's fine. I wonder why they have that, I wonder why they have that divot in there then. Yeah, that's how it lines up. Weird. And of course, I guess I could have scrolled back in my video and checked, but you know. Let's live dangerously. That's what I'll do. I'll just have it there, and then the back panel will help hold that in. Now we'll get our ballast. Set our ballast down. Get our standoffs, a pair of screws. down. Good. Now let's plug the main board back in. All right, my camera cut out. The uh, card was full. Didn't realize it. The card's not full now, so hopefully I got most of it. But again, this piece has a little L-shaped thingy right there. So it has to line up with that thingy down here. So I find that if I go like this, like on an angle, kind of get it under there. Come on. No. So you got to get that under there before the screw will line back up. Like that. There we go. I hope you saw that. That worked out really well, and now I can get that screw back in there. And then, this one for the top. It's 
good. And then, man, that's really about it, huh? Get to put this back in, but you know that just that's just a uh, a light shield to help keep the light from leaking out. Yeah, that'll go there. Let me uh, get my double-sided tape. So let's just put a new a new piece of tape on here. Get that old crud off. Once the uh, cover is on, it really doesn't matter. But it does help with light leakage and directing the air and all that stuff. So let's see. Get short piece, a little too long. Piece and we'll put that. Oh, we'll put that here. All right. We could put another piece there, but yeah, it's not really going to make any difference. These are more important. I get these the backing off. I hate getting the backing off double-sided tape. It always like pulls the whole thing up. Even when I feel like it's down super tight. If anybody has any tricks on using double-sided tape like this, please let me know because this piece here is turning into an absolute nightmare. Come on. There we go. This is a 3M VHB. Which I found out at one point is a super fancy name. It means very high bond. <laughs> you should just call it like super sticky. Alright, so that goes behind there. This goes down here. Uh, that goes there. There we go. Got that down. Oh, right. I forgot. Or almost forgot. It has to go under. And then... Our IR wire. And anybody's going to ask about the zip ties, I'm not putting the zip ties back in. It doesn't need it. You can tuck the wire in and it's fine. I just, I don't like zip ties. If I can help it. Alright. So then that goes on. Here we are. Little sticker. You know, I'm taking this off. This is driving me nuts seeing this. There we are. Alright, so to put these screws back in, remember there was two that were recessed here and here, and then a normal one that goes there. Now don't over tighten these. This plastic is always cracked. You can see that one, that piece actually probably fell out somewhere. Yeah. That down in there. Oops, oh, I just dropped it inside. Dang it. There it goes. Alright, so I'm going to take this one back out. Slide this forward a little bit. I'm going to set that.
set that here. Push that back in, there we go. Then once the screw is in, that'll lock it into place and it'll keep everything a lot more aligned. It would work fine without that piece in the back, but you know, if you can put it in, put it in. And this screw, right here, this one. Good. Alright, and then we have to put the back on. So, that is not dust, that's just rust from heat and moisture in the air. So the back, just have to get our wire over there in that spot, and then we just set that down. Just the bottom screws. The top ones go into the, uh, the lid, which is not on yet. That will go on soon. Now, I'm not going to tighten these up much either. I just want to get them in so they hold the, uh, the bottom in place. Because then we'll put the top on, and then we'll put the rest of the screws in. So I just want to get, oops, I just want to get that one just kind of in. There we go. See, I want that just a little bit because I have to catch that nub there, and then the top screws are going to go into that and that. So let's put keyboard wire in. Got that. Line those up, and then that metal or that plastic. There's a plastic uh, piece. There we go. in. Tighten that. Not too tight. I don't want to blow that out. Snug that down. Two five millimeter VGA fasteners. I suspect they're using HDMI, but it's good to still put everything back. All right, that's good. Let's flip it over, and then we have a couple screws to hold that top on. It's only a few. It's only those three. This one. This one and come on, there we are. And this one. All right, now all the screws are back in. That's good. Now the last thing we're going to do is install a new lamp assembly. This one looks more like the original. It's got the you know, it's got the rubber boot and wires look pretty much out of the way. So I'm just going to put this one in so that there's no, no question about the uh, lamp quality or lamp condition rather. The quality is fine. The condition rather is what I'm worried about. So we'll snug these down. Again, I'm not putting them in tight. Just go in until they stop just so they don't get loose. 
Then we get our lamp door cover. Bring it down gently so that the door switch is activated and we'll snug these guys down. And this foot bugging me, so just do that with it. So there we go. That is essentially fixed. I'm gonna take it over to the test area and we'll pick up over there. Here we go. Let's see what we get. We have light coming on. Get ready to focus it. Oh, it's up way too high. focused there we go nice picture I'm going to run a movie that I have in here uh, but I'm not going to run the movie on camera because of copyright reasons but you get the idea great little projector so there we have it. That's uh, repairing the power supply, well, changing the fuse in a power supply, and also replacing the color wheel for this old yet really nice, uh, beautiful picture quality. I have the movie up there now, but the uh, HD70, in fact. So if you have any questions about your Optima, whether it's an HD70, 72, 20, GT1080, etc. Fill in the model number. Put it down in the comments. Uh, if you don't subscribe, think about subscribing. Not your boss. Do what makes you feel good. But more importantly, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching.